75 years ago, a man invented the telephone. His name was Alexander Graham Bell. Everybody knows that. But who knows precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind for his ingenious new device? Who knows? Donegan speaking. Yeah? Be right over. At the tone, the time will be five. Five. Exactly. Hello, Mom. Danny. Do you think this is her first husband? Oh, Lucia! <laughs> Tell me more. Well, I'm not one to talk, but... The number you have dialed has been disconnected. This is a recording. Besides, there's more in life than boys. Oh, I must read you a note I got from Herbie. <coughs> It'll only take a few minutes. Yes, Daddy. I'll call you later. Of all the cockeyed times for the phone to ring. All right, I'll be there. I'm coming! The telephone. Few products of man's ingenuity have been so widely used and misused. Today, everybody knows everything about the telephone. But who knows what Mr. Bell had in mind? Also, what he did not have in mind. Here, for example, is Agatha Fewsmith. She's calling a Mrs. Evans about the local church bazaar. But if you were Mrs. Evans, you'd never know it. For some reason, Agatha can't get to the point. The weather leads to summer colds, and summer colds to that nice new doctor in the church membership. And Mrs. Evans is just confused. What's this all about, anyway? And when is it gonna end? Now, by this time, Mrs. Evans feels trapped and perhaps even a little bitter about the telephone. Oh, that woman. Well, I never. Mr. Bell did not have this in mind. But what he did have in mind is so easily accomplished. All it takes is a little organizing. That makes it easier on you, and it makes for a quicker, more pleasant way of getting things done. Precisely what Mr. Bell had in mind. That's even more important in the big, busy world of business. Yet, in his wildest imagination, Mr. Bell would never have conceived anything like the use salesman Sam Black is making of the telephone. That's just one important feature, Mr. Reynolds. Now, let's talk about the powertrain. Uh, that's right, uh, powertrain. Uh, that's the engine, the transmission, the rear axle. Well, sure, uh, every car's got them. Uh, but the important thing is this. Yeah. Sounds real interested, doesn't he? Mr. Bell definitely did not have this in mind. It's, well, it's unstrategic for two reasons. First of all, you can't really sell a complicated piece of equipment over the telephone. Whatever your product, your prospect has to see its features and see them demonstrated to appreciate them. More important, your prospect has to understand your product's benefits to him before he'll buy it. And it's simply too easy to say no over the telephone. In fact, it doesn't take any effort at all. But where does the telephone fit in here? Well, what Mr. Bell had in mind for the telephone was not keeping people apart, but getting them together. Using the telephones to establish an opportunity to do a good selling job. 
or to bring your prospect into the right selling atmosphere. But here's another example of something Mr. Bell would frown on. This energetic young man is Pete Wilson. And believe it or not, he's fairly intelligent too. He's an air conditioner salesman. And he shrewdly figured out a sales plan. There must be a tremendous concentrated market for air conditioners. All he has to do is cover that market like a blanket. Mr. Bell would approve the determination, but he did not have such a pedestrian approach in mind. Pete has completely overlooked the whole point of Mr. Bell's invention. With time-saving telephone calls, our young salesman can quickly determine his air conditioner market. Who is a potential prospect and who is not? <laughs> And Pete's ready to concentrate his selling time and energy on real prospects. That's when the telephone can really be an extra sales tool to help any salesman create selling opportunities. For instance, with his telephone and an owner list, a service file, or a registration list, depending on his field, a good salesman can literally ring hundreds of prospect bells right from his own office. And, of course, using the telephone strategically like this, is just what Mr. Bell had in mind. Yet even when the telephone is used strategically, unfortunate things happen that Mr. Bell did not have in mind. For example. Hello. Mr. Carson, this is Wally Smith, Dependable Life Insurance Company. With that new home of yours, I'm sure you'll want dependable insurance protection. Not with you, brother. Another brush off for Wally. And it's really not the telephone's fault. Sure, anyone can see that Wally's actually a nice, friendly guy. But he doesn't sound that way over the telephone. Like a lot of other people, Wally doesn't project his true personality over the telephone. And again, the answer is so simple. Before you make your call, try imagining how you might sound over the telephone. I'm sure you'll want dependable insurance protection. And then how you want to sound. Yes, Mrs. Carson. I'll be glad to drop by and explain it to you. So, whoever you are, before you make that next call, think a moment. Remember how Agatha ambles on and on, and make sure you organize your call, even writing down the things you want to talk about before you make the call. Remember, too, that you can't sell a complicated idea or product over the phone. So use the telephone strategically to arrange your selling opportunities. And remember how valuable the telephone can be as a time and work saver when it's also used strategically to create new selling opportunities quickly and easily. And most important of all, remember how easy it is to give the wrong impression over the telephone. So imagine how you might sound to yourself the chances are your true personality will go out over the telephone just as Mr. Bell had in mind. For he was not only an inventive man, but a man of great vision. And even though his first telephone message was sent quite by accident, Mr. Watson, come here, I want you. Mr. Bell, I heard you. I heard every word you said distinctly. You said, Mr. Watson, come here. I want you. Or so I did. Oh, it's a wonderful day for you, Mr. Bell. Everything you've worked for, every dream has come true. It works, Mr. Bell. It works. Yes, I... I dare say you're right, Watson. Our experiments have opened up a, a new age of communications. There'll be a day when... when people will think nothing of conversing through instruments such as we have developed. You mean as an everyday occurrence? Well, that's what I had in mind. The day will come when, when people will think no more of speaking to someone miles away than as if they were in the same room. Think of its possibilities. Yes, Watson. I can foresee the day when homes will be linked to other homes. Homes to factories, factories to stores. Cities will be joined to other cities and nations to other nations. But 
Tell me how, Mr. Bell. How can you foretell all these wonders? Well, now, really, who would know better than I? Any resemblance between Alexander Graham Bell and Don Amici was strictly intentional.